Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers is Professor Chris Mustafa Wokobia Jr. as a convener of Country First Movement. Good morning, Prof. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Prof. Good morning. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be on with you. Mm -hmm. All right. Pleasure is all ours. All right. We'll be starting with the Vanguard this morning. Um, and it talks about minimum wage. It says labor cuts demand to 497,000 naira. Federal government, organized private sector, offer 57,000 naira. Now, um, the writer here says, the yesterday's talk end in stalemate. And Uzodima attends briefly, um, br attends briefly as other governors shun minimum wage talks. Um, so this, this minimum wage talk has been on for a while right now. There's been a lot of back and forth negotiations. Initially started at almost a, a million naira. Labor was able to cut it down to 615. The federal government came and said it would only have about 25 to 35 um, percent increase on that, which they, they, they stopped at 48,000 mm -hmm. briefly. And then, as of right now, they are offering 57,000 mm -hmm. with Labor saying, you know what, that still doesn't cut it. 497,000 naira seem like the ideal living wage for someone to be able to um, leave or have that standard of living in Nigeria for you and your family to be able to live well, I think maybe 497,000 naira should be it. Now, we're going from 30,000 naira to 57,000 naira by the federal government and organized private sector. But I want to get your take on this because there's been a lot of back and forth. And at what point do we all reach an agreement and move on from this? Because it's been a while. No, I think that what is most important is for government to be very realistic about uh, what uh, a minimum wage should be at this point. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the back and forth with labor and government um, um, is serious because labor understands that as we talk, the rate of inflation is about 34%. Yes. I don't know whether you can hear me. Yes, I can. Well, the rate of inflation is about 34 percent and um, and if you go to the market you find out that the food inflation is high um other kind of inflation is high and then you feel heavily bothered and bothered by uh, the reality in the marketplace and that's why labor is insisting that it has to be something substantial um the question we have had to um, think of it is if you give as much as 400,000 how will it also affect the the market and the the, the real value of the naira mm. so i think that um, economists i think that experts in uh, the advice labor and indeed government as to what it must do and how it must move on you know, but I solidarize with the insistence of the NLC and TUC that the minimum wage must be more than what it is presently. Mm. Yeah, well, um, the federal government is claiming that uh, the reforms of the federal government uh, or the reform policies have attracted FDI and reduced inflation. Uh, that is coming from them. I don't know. You are in the market. Uh, do you think that this is the reality on ground? You know, there is something that, that excites me about the effort of those who pretend our economy to gain confidence. Uh, I listen to the CBN governor do quite a lot of analysis, and then I asked a few friends who are experts in the economy. And uh, the first thing I was told is that um, beyond policy programmatic, it's how believable the economic and fiscal policy of government is that it does appear like we have too many, so much somersaults in the policy programmatic of government. And so it doesn't seem to inspire so much confidence. It doesn't seem to uh, drive the economy rightly. I, I think that my advice, you know, beyond saying that, okay, the FDIs and, and the policy programmatics will reduce inflation, I think that beyond those programmatics, we, we must look at the cost of production. 
you, you must look at the, the availability of supplies of food. You must look at how the things that people need uh, get to the market. And if you don't, if you have more money in the public space and you have goods that they can buy, naturally, the schoolboy will tell you that it snowballs inflation. And you ask yourself, Yamgu, how much of the farmers and their produce and their yield gets to the market? And then you ask yourself again, how many of the farmers are in their farm? You also ask yourself, considering the cost of generating power, how many production outfits are effectively working? So there's a whole is a mismatch of several uh, challenges, and the economy will continue to suffer. Inflation will continue to rise for as long as these major issues, these major indices, are not addressed. So that's the fundamental challenge. It's beyond the policy pragmatic. It's beyond the beautiful words that those who pretend are economic. Uh, sector uh, true. It's about ensuring that those basics are tended to. Okay, well. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay, are, an, are you taking the other one? Yeah, there's another There's another one here. Uh, which kind of rides off what... Does, um, it sound like, does it sound like doomsday pro pro prophecies and programmatic? No, it doesn't sound like... It is normal, uh, simple economics. I think the government must do something about these fundamentals. Uh, how the cost of energy affects production, mm. how insecurity affects farm produce, how bad roads affects bringing out the few produce you have to, to the market. It has to, it's, it's a mismatch of issues that uh, not just policy programmatic and nice work from the CBN can fix. Mm. Well, um, I know that uh, they are discussing um, our economy today. So because on the top there it says Shetima Kadusu Oye, others discuss Nigeria's economy today. Um, I, sometimes I wonder if they're really in uh, today's world or if they're in, in Nigeria today to understand where we are or what the common man is facing. And I hope that, you know, this discussions is not just some... Um, you know, ring my role to say, yes, we're doing something, the photo op. And I hope that they're really discussing our economy. But I was going to ask, if there are things that you would like to change or certain, um, you know, things that you would say Nigeria can start to implement, certain policies, certain regulations, things that would actually help our economies to, you know, grow and even be sustainable in the long run, what would be those things? Yeah, in other words, uh, what would you like for them to be discussing today, yeah. because these are the important things uh, that will change our economy. The first is broad-based stakeholders engagement, uh, not for photo ops, not out of populism, broad-based stakeholders engagement. Engage the public sector uh, programmatically, progressively, proactively, engage them because uh, all over the world the private sector drives the economy and then find out this uh, naira to dollar war mm. how do they think what do they think government must do you don't decree currency uh, 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 the real value of currency you allow market forces and ensure that these market forces are friendly as it were uh, by proactively engaging them. Secondly, which is very important, confidence building. Uh, you find out that oftentimes what we have done in leadership in this country, I said a few years ago, that we have elevated falsehood, deceit, perfidy, mendacity and debauchery to an act of state. Rather than telling our people the exact facts and the truth as it were, remember the, the holy book says, that ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You know, very unfortunately, um, we hear uh, the new cliche in town uh, as developed by the Gen Z generation. Government gaslights us. The economic <laughs> uh, operators gaslight us. Everybody tries to uh, befuddle uh, the, 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 the space with all kinds of uh, deceit and chickenery. So what it actually does is erode the confidence of the people in the policy programmatic of government, erode the confidence of the people in the economic management of our nation. But what must we do? Um, 
confidence building. Then number three, ensure that there is security. Security so that those who are farmers can go to the farms. Number four, ensure not only that there is security, that you help and support farmers. You know, uh, do not tell us that you're giving to fertilizers to the farmers and the same fertilizers ends up in the market square. Mm -hmm. You know, where people who are supposed to give these fertilizers to the people go to trade them. You know, there are a whole major overhaul that government must engage. And it takes a whole lot of political will. I have said that governance is not rocket science. Look at what people are doing everywhere. Just a few, a, a few months ago, you saw how bad it was in Niger, how mm -hmm. bad it was in, uh, in a few countries around us here. But you know what? You, you need political will, do less of politics and populism, and more programmatic and progressive actions. So I think that government must sit up, talk to the people frankly, ensure that we protect lives and property so that people can go to the farms, and then ensure that they engage the stakeholders in the economy rather than just decreeing uh, economic policies and programmatics. I think what you just said, you know, rising to the, the next one, because what you're, what you're describing, I would take that as proper democracy. Like, that is what we expect. And um, President Tinubu has said, solution to bad governance in Africa is more democracy. Now, also, the former president, Ulushegu Obasanjo, said we need to re-examine um, the democracy that we inherited, and we need to start to look for um, how to infuse our own African peculiarities to this democracy. But... With everything that you have said, it, are you going to say we're practicing true democracy right now in Nigeria? No, what we have, Rume, is civil rule. Mm -hmm. What we have is uh, a governance of people who are in mufti rather than military uniform. What we have is, uh, at best, um, civil rule. Democracy suggests that uh, the, the rights of the people are protected because the school boy will define democracy as the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Tragically, what we have is government of a few, for a few, and by a few. And I say this without <laughs> equivocation. Uh, if you live in a country where there's so much hunger, uh, statistics says that we have the highest poor in the world today. And our legislators are about the highest paid in the world today. You need to yourself questions. When you live in a country where uh, people can barely afford transportation, and your legislators, our legislators, get gifts of 160 million uh, naira XUV mm. to, to to do their jobs, then you ask yourself questions. If, if our uh, executives are about the highest paid in the world, then you have to ask questions. I'm aware that the American president is on about uh, $374,000 per annum salary. Uh, a lawmaker in Nigeria, on the average, gets about uh, 18 to 24 million naira per month. Convert that and, and find out what that comes to in a year. And you know that there is amazing disconnect between the reality, as it were, and what uh, governmental operators tell us. There's another thing that bothers me and it troubles the carapace of my mind, the cost of governance. We have heard governments say repeatedly that they will reduce the cost of governance. The question is how well have they done that? You know, uh, a, a minister has so many aides. Some say that uh, some lawmakers have as much as 100 aides, like the Senate president. And you ask yourself, where does he pay them from? You know, I, I think that the time has come for us to uh, engage more in productivity, engage more in diversifying uh, the economy of our country, engage more also in protecting the mainstay of our economy. You know, when we live in a country where uh, those who operate the system do not even know the Amgo, the number, the exact amount of liter of fuel that we consume in Nigeria mm. per day. When you live in a country, uh, Rumor, when those who operate the NMPC Limited do not even know the exact uh, amount of barrels of crude oil that leaves Nigeria per day. When you live in a country where those who superintend our nation cannot account for the resources that God has blessed us with, and there's cost to worry. So I think that your question about uh, whether we have a democracy, 
pales to uh, primary my choice of word insignificance compared to what those who superintend our nation do. We have a go an oligarchy of some sort. We have uh, feudalists of some sort. We have We seem to be having audio people issues. who uh, there's a word that uh, you know across, across the world kakistocracy to pretend and um, live in amazing opulence with the people whose resources where whilst the people are in terrible poverty if you check the number of out of school children you know that we don't have a democracy if you mm -hmm. check the number the amount of poverty and the rate the, the, the distance now we don't even have uh, a middle class are you aware yeah. If you have a democracy, you will have a middle class, you know. So I, I think that it is uh, tragic to observe that those who should pretend our country uh, largely misunderstand, misconstrue, misdefine, if you like, the word democracy with uh, what, we, what we have today. We've had uh, uninterrupted 25 years, if you like, of uh, civil rule. Mm -hmm. I pray that... Uh, as a people, we continue to refine, redefine, reshape, rework, and ensure that we restructure the fabrics of our nation such that the rights of the people will count, such that uh, there will be devolution of power and resource control, such that the true ideals and values of democracy become prevalent. Okay, you just talked about out-of-school children, and when this is mentioned, a lot of people uh, usually think about um, uh, secondary school, primary school, and all that. But right now, the co because of currency crisis, UK universities uh, send Nigerians packing is a headline also today, and it's, it's really worrisome. I don't know what, how, how that makes you feel. I was, uh, I was students who were supposed to be sponsored by the government in the UK have been sent packing. Let me say sometimes, Yangu, when we have to discuss this, issues about our dear nation. I got tears in my eyes and tears for no other reason than the fact that uh, we live in a country country blessed by God with amazing resources and riches ineffable. Monstrous wealth. I hear people try to repudiate that, but that's untrue. Monstrous wealth. Of the 46 priceless materials, minerals in the world, about 36 are in this country. Yangu, we're the most populous nation in the world. Go see what China and India has done with their population. A population is a factor in economic development and growth. But tragically, tragically, with tears in my eyes, Nigerians are forced. If we had our educational system working well, if our system was working well, you won't have those young boys and young girls and families that have their world stranded in the UK on account of, one, the art of foreign exchange on account of the fact that Hello Prof. I think we're having some some audio issues. Yeah, he, he was just talking about the fact that we have mineral resources and mm -hmm. on the punch newspaper or is it or the Guardian newspaper, Nigeria's gemstones export hit a fifteen point two million dollars, securing thirtieth place globally. And these so we are, have money. Yeah, and these are things that are, are, are officially recorded. We there is a lot of mining. There's, mining. More, there's more mining done illegally in Nigeria than the one that is done legally. So we don't even know how much money is, is being lost. I think everyone is just daily. fixated on crude. That's just the problem. Everyone is fixated on crude. Oh, it's crude oil, crude oil. We're forgetting all the other resources that And I've have. always said it, it. It's very unfair for, for the but region that produces. Prof okay. yeah. A prof? Yes, I'm back. Yeah, we okay. lost your audio uh, for some time there. You, you, were, you, were, you were on something. I was just m noting that you talked about the fact that we have so many mineral resources, and then we have this headline saying Nigeria's gemstones exports hit $15.2 million, securing 30th place globally. And I was wondering, this is what is legally uh, being mined in, yeah. in Nigeria. This is what is recorded officially. What about all the ones that are not, not even recorded. legal, who are not, that are not recorded? Which and this being said on The Guardian this yes. morning. So, we have money. Yambu, if you were to have the facts and the figures, you will cry all day. 
if you were to follow the Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, we can now. Why do you think that you have so much banditry and uh, criminality in Zamfara, for instance? Why do you think that you have so much uh, crisis and conflict in Nazarua State, for instance, and across our country? You know, there is so much larceny, so much criminality out there. People are mining our resources. They have Chinese, they have Taiwanese, they have uh, Japanese, and they have people from across the world who, look at what happened the other day in Ibadan. They, they were even living so close to the government house, but people do not know. And they say they have a license to mine. Now there is need for, and that's why I've always said that when you restructure this country and wealth devolves from the local units to the center, you find out that if I have an oil well around my house in uh, Ibuzo, in Delta State, for instance, I will be the first line of protection for that world. In the First Republic, we had oil. There was no such issues as about oil theft because wealth came from the component parts to the center. The state government will hold back 50%, uh, give 30% uh, for the running of the federal government and 20% to a dedicated pool. When you have a rent-taking and a rent-seeking uh, system like we have today, what my father will say that in Nigeria will continue to be nobody's property. Yamgu, we're talking about a nation that has the highest number of out-of-school children, whereas, for instance, uh, most of these communities has oil well, oil wells that are given to individuals across the nation. Most of them from the north, some from the southwest, some from the southeast, and then those in whose uh, territory these oil wells or, 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 or oil wells are located do not even have. And then you ask yourself, what kind of justice, equity, and fairness do you have in this country? There are fundamental issues that we must address, and that's why I said we need the political will. There is so much resources in this country, and that's why NLC and TUC are insisting that you pay them as much as 400000 minimum on wage. Mm. But I think that the fundamentals at first, going to one year of this administration, Mr. President must sit with his team and decide to play the role of a patriot, if he can, and decide to challenge everyone to effectively ensuring that anybody who's in this country mining our wealth must be properly documented. He must be pro properly taxed, properly registered, and every wealth that leaves a territory, the, co the territory must have some percentage. I'm not just talking about, uh, like Martin Luther King Jr. would say, that true compassion is not tossing a coin at a beggar, but ensuring that the edifies, the property, the space that produces beggars are redefined, restructured, and reworked. Nigeria needs a massive rework. If we continue to run like this, our country will continue to remain poorer and poorer by the day because uh, there is no sense of ownership in this country. No matter how patriotic you are, if this structure continues, uh, 10, permit me, and for those who are religious, my apologies, 10 Jesus the Christ, <laughs> 10 Prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him, will be unable to fix this rot. Because the federal government should not be involved in supplies of computer to my fe to the federal government college in my hometown of Ibuzo. The federal government should not be involved in tiring roads in Delta State. The federal government should not be involved in tiring roads across the country. Every state should have enough resources to tie the roads that goes through it. And the only way that they can do that is if you have resource control. There are fundamental issues that must happen in this country if we want success and progress. All right. So since you're, you're talking about that and you kind of mentioned the fact that um, this administration is almost a year in office. In fact, um, six days from now, we will be celebrating one year of um, President Tinubu's administration. And on the punch, it says, first anniversary, Tinubu directs 47 ministers to showcase scorecards.
The writer here says, President plans low-key celebration. Ministers begin sectoral briefings today. I don't know what the low-key celebration means. I don't know if that's their way of, um, you know, cutting cost of governance. <laughs> I don't know if this is where they want to cut that cost on governance. But we have just about a minute. Since they said here, um, ministers sh should showcase the scorecards. What do you think the scorecard of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in this first one year would be for your own scorecard? Let me say that, uh, uh, Ruma, in your question is an answer to that question. Um, you did talk about, oh, what, uh, whether the Loki celebration will be a mark of cutting mm. cost of governance. We had so much of policy programmatics uh, and populism than more progress, progressive and proactive action. Mm. Uh, I, I hope uh, going forward, Mr. President and his team will sit down, uh, tinker with the economy proactively and progressively, do less of populism, tell the CBN governor and those who superintend our economy to sit down and do more of proactive engagement rather than a media briefing mm. that appeals to nothing compared to what is actually happening. And then send people out to truly understand what is happening and what how people feel. In the course of opening this review, uh, Yamgo did, did note something, that he wonders if people, if they actually live in this country, if they actually understand the reality mm -hmm. of uh, what Nigerians are going through. The time for true stock taking is now. The time to be truly true to what they say and be is now. The time to have some level of empathy and love for our country is now. There's mm -hmm. a lot that can be done. I haven't lost faith. I told somebody two nights ago that my faith in Nigeria is on our table. But I believe that ch the challenge is on leadership to show the way. Nigerians are willing to, to walk the pathway to a new day, a new deal, and a new republic. But governance and government, and those who should pretend uh, uh, social political space, must show the way. Um, mm -hmm. By and large, if you ask me how well government has fared, I would say uh, government knows that it hasn't done well. And I don't want to score them over 100, but they know. And going forward, uh, beyond telling us that they are going to have a low kids celebration, is to ensure that they improve on security, is to ensure that they deal with issues about food inflation, is to ensure that they build confidence and hope uh, across the country. If their mantra is renewed hope, let them get to work on that. It's mm -hmm. to ensure that um, our educational system is effectively, efficiently, and effectually addressed. It's to ensure fundamentally that our health care is improved and to ensure that uh, whether they like it or not, the reason, the primary reason for which government uh, exists is protection of lives and properties, that it challenges security architecture and indeed the police to do the best to protect our people. And those are the minimums right. we acts of leadership. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, there was something you said, leading with empathy and love. Because I feel like if you have love for your people, if you have love for your nation, of course you would want, um, you want the best for Nigeria. People who are truly patriotic and have genuine concerns for the people would definitely want to lead with love. Lead with love. Mm -hmm. um, and we hope that our leaders are listening. We hope they start to have that genuine empathy for the people. But this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. We want to say thank you for coming, Prof. Thank Always you. a pleasure reviewing the papers with you. Pleasure is mine and God bless Nigeria. God Amen. bless Nigeria. God bless you too. Mm. All right, we've been speaking with Professor Mustafa Wonkobi Adrenio. He's a convener of Country First Movement. And we've just been reviewing the papers, taking stories, making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break and when we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic, which comes from River State. So cross River State, please stay with us.